That's hot. Talk about stank. Make my shorts so hot I can cook an egg on it. It's a hot rod fire motor engine thing. Hey guys, put out a couple videos here recently about my shop. I'm cleaning up in here, right? And everybody noticed the waste oil burner that I, I converted a wood stove into a waste oil burner. And uh, I thought I'd show you how I do this. Now, disclaimer, don't do this and burn down your fucking garage and try to blame me because number one, you don't leave it unattended for more than, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Know what you're doing. This was a lot of trial and error over basically three days. I sat here and played with this until I got it where I was secure enough with it that I could leave it for a while. Uh, but you shouldn't leave them unattended now. There are some of these out there people they you know you use a uh, You can go on YouTube and you see them. They use a, a Stainless steel bowl and they induct air in it Yeah, that is Just asking for trouble. I mean in my opinion, that's more dangerous than what I'm doing right here So let me just get into it. Okay, let me show you the things that I got and why I got them. So the first thing I got was I was trying to figure out what do I let the oil drain into. Okay, what am I going to put it in? So I started searching YouTube and stuff and I found a guy overseas that basically used puppy bowl. You can buy these on Amazon, $15 for two of them. There's different sizes. For my wood stove, the small worked the best. I did get a bigger one because you know more surface area bigger flame hotter you know the whole thing but these won't fit in there so if I ever build me a new you know like a barrel stove or something this is probably what I'd go with but for now this is what I got okay I believe it's 10 and 10.2 inches something like that and this is how it looks now okay let me get under the light so you can see it so it's that puppy bowl and I just took a small drill bit and went around here evenly and then I adjusted it accordingly after I started. I burned it once, I didn't like the air that it was getting so I made some bigger holes in bigger places just to kind of get the flow of air in there. And I'll explain why this thing works so good compared to other, other systems. And the guy, I wish I could remember his name, if I if I get it, I'll put it on the screen right now. Go check it out. He's a master at this. He's really good. He's done a bunch of different things. But um, anyway, this is the one I come up with, and I'll explain this after a bit. So then after you have that, you have to have something to make this. It kind of works like a carburetor, you know. The air comes through. You got to keep the air to a certain extent in the area, you know, in the area of the fuel just like a, you know, an air pump, an engine. The air comes up, it mixes with the burnt fuel, the, the burning fuel, the hot fuel, and that's when you get your combustion, your flames, and all that stuff. So what I did was this is an old popcorn tin. You know, they're about that tall. And I measured it, and it actually fit, so I just cut it down, and if I was going to do this again, I'd probably make it a little taller, but it worked, okay? Basically, this sits down just like that. Sits in there perfectly, and it's a little crusty because it's, you know, it's it's well used. I got her pretty flaming hot. Matter of fact, I'll explain something after a while, but you got that. Now you need to get your top hat, but you gotta get it up in the air. So I just used what I had laying around. There's a saw blade. And that sits in just like that. That way, I can take this off to show you. See there? And then this goes down. And that also gives an extra burn spot. So when your oil comes down in there, it can hit this. And this will be just as hot as the stainless steel. Causing more, you know, flame, more combustion, so to speak. Now, most people, what they'll do that I've noticed around, they'll take a coffee can or 
you know, like a soup can or something for a spacer, you know, that sits up like this, and then they put something for a top hat, like a rotor. And believe it or not, as many cars as I've built, I don't have a rotor. I was looking for one, and I thought, man, what could I get to, what could I get? What could I use to get that up higher? And boy, did I come up with something. This is my top hat. What that is, y'all, that's a an eBay Velocity Stack, stainless steel, okay, which is good, burns hot, it will not melt. Well, I mean, I guess it's good if you got it good and hot. That's a Velocity Stack that has a little bolt-in thing in the bottom that holds your filament down. And this is an Edelbrock, that's an Edelbrock 10-inch air cleaner top. Stainless steel. Well, that'll work. Made me a freaking bolt that goes through there. Tighten that down tight. It sits against there. Voila. Top hat and stainless steel. And it's the same size as this. So the flame comes up and goes around. That holds the combustion low to cause more heat. Okay. That's my understanding. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, never claimed to be, but that's basically what I get out of the subject. So you end up with that right there, which is pretty damn awesome, really. If you think about it, that's, I came up with that all by myself. Now let me get you over to the stove and show you what I did. All right. So went to Menards, got this here bucket, you know, they're a couple bucks. And this little union, a wall union, I guess, or whatever for a water. Don't ask me terms for plumbing. I don't know. Got this shut off. Now, all my line is half inch outside, three eighths inside. Now, if you look a little, a lot of people use, you know, they just use that hardened uh, copper that you can buy the sticks of. Well, I wanted something I could bend a little more. Uh, and yeah, it kinks in places and it's fine. The flow is still there. It's it didn't miss a beat So anyway, I got this shut off That comes that way I can shut this off take this off and I can take that down and clean the sludge out Which you'll want to be able to do trust me. You'll want to be able to do if you're using old engine oil but this comes down into a uh, Yeah, this thingy valve uh, Whatever I still have to do some uh, I'm going to do some fixing on this too to make the flow a little bit more even. I figured that out watching YouTube. Then I got this T, and I believe this is half inch. I believe. I, I, I can't remember now, but you, you get the idea. And that comes out to more copper tubing that goes down. That's my 351 block. What do you think about that? So, and I drill the hole right there through a hole that was already in the, the outer exterior of the stove into the stove right okay so we're that far bucket on off switch copper tubing to the thingamabob to a T now here's what I did to the T see that hole on the other side you'll want a piece in here to run this copper through here and basically you just drill this through this fitting you drill it through till you get to where you like it and then you tighten it down and that little crush fitting will crush it so it leaks like a sieve even though it's not supposed to leak but anyway I drilled a hole in the back of this T that way when you turn that on when you open the valve and then you turn this on you can see the stream with the light behind it because I got a light right above it for now it's not permanent but that way you can see the stream. It comes down copper line, goes in the back. Comes out right there. And it comes around and it goes down into about where it's gonna go into that puppy dish bowl or whatever. Now, the reason I have it coming all the way across is it was easier to bend without kinking. And also this garage it leans that way that way the oil <laughs> I mean I could level it up I guess but 
the oil drips right there. And once I get that thing in here, I'll show you. You'll notice license plates. Now, the license plates are in there to cover all the air access to the burning section of the stove so the air only comes up through there or through this little vent right there and it only comes up through those four little vents and that is why the puppy bowl in the center with drilled holes is a great idea because that forces the air right up through into the combustion chamber basically um, and you can see how hot it got it melted that sucker that's a plate it was but the better idea is to put ash in there with some kind of steel put ash all around that that way nothing gets through except for those holes you need that to force through that puppy bowl or through whatever you're using but this is the best idea i think this puppy bowl idea but so again this is not the better line to use you should probably use the hardened you know the thicker stuff that you can bend easier get a precise place but the most important thing in here as long as that oil gets into that that bowl or your stainless steel whatever you're using you have to have that air induction directly into the you know the combustion chamber and that's that's the god's honest truth so if you want to force air in there yeah you can just throw a bowl in there put you something that hooks up to to a uh a what you call it a uh coleman blow up motor that blows up things for you you can do that but why when you can just force the air that's all the air you're ever going to need is right there okay bigger the stove bigger the puppy bowl hotter the flame okay so let me get this down in there and i'll show you what i'm doing okay so we got our puppy bowl it's right here we're going to take that I'm going to try to show how to do this, but get those holes directly. Well, oh, shit. You got to make sure you get them directly. I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. That way maybe I can light this a little better. Nope, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. Son of a bitch. So, as you can see, those holes are right above the holes in the puppy bowl are right above those four that are in there. Now you're going to get, this is where having ash or something in there is going to make this better because you're still going to get some leaking through the sides. The more forced air through those holes, the better. Okay. So we got that. We'll put our ring on here. It goes up under this. It's hard to do small stove. Just like that she's in there make sure it's still in the same place then we're going to take our spacer a la saw blade oh got me there we go and that also helps with the air see how it has it around the ring on the outside that forces that air up and you'll see where this is actually just kind of hitting this you may not want that I could bend this out a little more like so it's probably leaking but it's not but yeah you want to make sure that stays in there just like that okay it's right there you can see that it can hit that saw blade that's fine because it's gonna go straight down and that saw blade is going to get just as hot. Well, then we put our topper on. Make sure you put the Edelbrock to the front. Look at that. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha! That boy genius. That's perfect. Just the way it is. So now let's try to get this thing running. Okay, so views you can see it right there it's right there what i have here is some diesel and this is diesel out of my parts washer that's broken at the moment and this is old diesel you can see it it, it's, it still looks pretty good because all the dirt had went to the bottom so we're going to put this in there 
Make sure you get it in a puppy bowl, not everywhere. And remember, it's diesel or kerosene works. Just get you something. Get her down in there real good. You want a good amount. Maybe a little more. To light it. Just get her in there. Oh, might want to get the flashlight out of there. Hopefully, y'all can see that. Get this in there and get her good and hot. Just like that. You'll be tempted to sit there and turn that oil on. You can't do that. You need to get that. Maybe I don't have enough in there. I don't think I got enough in there. There we go. You gotta get her good and hot. Then you're gonna wanna shut this. Do not leave it open. Get it forced air as much as you can. And let me show you. Okay, flames are going. Had some bad diesel. I'm going to turn on the spigot. Then we get here. I'm going to give her a jump. And then we'll bring her back. Get about a pencil thread. Now we need to shut this because we need that combustion to happen. It should be good and hot. The idea is to get it good and hot so when the oil gets in there, Come on now. That'll be good for now, I think. It's about a pencil thread when it comes down. But uh, I need to work on that thing so it has a smoother flow instead of just dumping, you know? I can see flames with the shitty worn out wood burning stove. See it? I ain't had any trouble with that though. As long as you got this damper open, you know, and it's not smoking back. It don't come through there. It goes straight out. So that thing is started. And we'll just sit and wait. Uh, this one don't burn as good as some other ones will. Because this is pretty enclosed. But you can see in there the little yellow lights. She's a going. Okay. So let me get this thing going here. And I'll get right back with you. But it is flowing. That's oil. Once it gets going. And it, boy, it just took off. It just took off. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut this. That way all the air is coming through right there. And this thing is worn the hell out. She know, oh, that thermostat's pure garbage. That's all right, it needs to be wide open anyway. It's got a little line that goes up to a hot thermostat up in there. But you just leave her wide open. She'll come down when it gets hot. Oh, look at that in there. She's going. Now, this one, in order to keep the most heat in, because I have this badass, huge brick chimney that goes up to something. I think it's a, oh, I don't know. It's like a... I, it's almost like porcelain. I, I don't know, but there's a big stack up there. So this thing, this is kick ass. A lot of people don't have this. And if you don't, you want to be real careful with this. I would probably go with some kind of stainless and make sure it ain't, you know, any way it can catch wood on fire and away from walls and all that because not everybody has this brick chimney built into their shit, you know. I got pretty lucky with that. I've used this wood burner for years, but look at that. That thing is getting hot. That's a nice way to check it. It would be great if I had a glass front one, but I don't. So let's get her warming up and I'll explain some more stuff to you. Okay. This thing is hot, hot as hell. And I'm gonna be quiet for a minute. You may be able to hear it. I don't wanna get my camera too close because that shit is stoked. But, you know, I got all the doors shut, and the only air it's getting is out of that little flapper that's broken, but that's fine. It can get all the air at once. Now, what I do, just like a wood stove to keep some of the heat in, I'll kick this back just a little, about like that. And not so much that the flames, but right there, wow, yeah, that, the heat is, is coming out of there pretty good. 
uh, like really good. Now, here's the thing. So, the cleaner the oil, the better the burn. The cleaner the burn, okay, when you do it like this. The whole thing about you're not going to get smoked, that's BS because you're going to get a little bit because if your oil's really dirty, it's going to give you some black smoke. And every now and then you may hear a little popping noise out of your out of your little T that you put in, you know, your your sight hole. But uh, other than that, boy, that sucker's getting hot. Now, I did have to clean. I think I've ran this thing four times. And because I got a bunch of dirty oil, like old dirty oil, I got a, I got a shitload of oil, guys. You know how many cars I have. You go back and look at the channel if you don't believe me. Every one of them, I change the oil at least once, twice a year. So there's a lot of oil there. And it's dirty oil. Some of these are old engines. Now, I have to clean out the, the tip of that copper. I just take a little pick and I'll go through there and, you know, clean it out. I had to do that right before we started here. I did that. Did I got something on my nose? Look at that. Oh my gosh. I got nose on. Uh-oh. Hold on a minute. Disgusting. Nah. It's not that disgusting. Yeek. Better? Is that it? I get it? You human no hair? There we go. Anyway, let me show you what it looks like outside. So yeah, right now I got a bunch of dirty shit in there and that's what it's going to look like for a minute. It's still heating up, you know. Uh, once this thing gets cooking good, that is, it's, you can barely see it. It almost looks like, just like a, like a heat wave. That's all you see. But it's still burnt and my God, I just fixed that thing. You talk about stank. I'd rather smell this than that. Yuck. But it gets cleaner as it goes, okay? It, it will clean itself up. Now back in here, you can see we got a great flame going in there. And it, I mean, I wish I could, you know, you had feel of vision because that shit is hot. And the other thing I got is I got this fan up here that, let me turn on. I'll turn it on, we'll just put it on low. So the reason I really wanted to do this or try it at least was because me and Zeppi are going to be out here all winter building that engine and possibly that one or that one and maybe a Buick engine, I don't know. But right now I can kind of smell oil so that means this needs to be opened up a little bit more. But once you get the system down get your fan to blow it around you know and I got a it's 25 by something I'm still cleaning, don't make fun of me this is junk like my beer cooler it's still I'm still learning here and I'm probably gonna come up with some new ideas maybe I'll post them but uh, this thing's doing what I needed to do it's quiet in here you can't really hear the fan okay otherwise I gotta run that damn thing all winter and then I gotta shut it off every time I want to film and I mean it freezes in here just like that because there's no insulation that's wood that's just it and there's some uh, whatever stuff on the outside but it don't help the the whole floor air comes through the floors the sides there's cracks in the damn floor but anyway personal views do's and don'ts make sure you have clean waste oil no water okay don't let there be any water in it because that happened to me on accident i dumped some in there and i thought ah, oh, it'll be all right I was sitting in here playing around and all of a sudden I thought I was going I thought I was gonna end up on the moon guys it boom pop boom and of course it's in an enclosed place but what if you're sitting there trying to move things around or you get next to it and that door opens or so, you know something and it blows boom snap crackle pop you know you're missing fingers face eyeballs nose that's why I'm telling you, do your own due diligence on this. Do your own investigation. Do not follow me. I'm just giving you an idea. It's trial and error. Just don't let the error be so bad that we don't have you no more. Okay? It is dangerous. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not. But it's something I needed to try because I was spending so much on propane. And we all know how, how Bidenomics is working out. 
but we won't go into that and uh, I just wanted to make this a little more slick and easy to deal with and right now this is awesome this is working but make sure you do your own investigations okay now let me tell you a story about what happened to me yesterday I was right here in the middle of this garage I was cleaning yeah I know it don't look like I was cleaning but I was cleaning cleaning up the carpet and the floors and stuff I had put some oil in there that looked clean it looked just fine and I was facing away I was facing this way okay this way towards my awesome new beer cooler and all of a sudden my back just got scorching hot and I thought what the hell turned around it was the oil that I changed out of the Buick that had washed the cylinders with gas yeah yeah there was there was gas in the oil and I had flames here I'll just show you I made a short about it but I had flames coming out of every possible place on the stove and flames shooting out of this pipe up that and you could see the you could see the cherries up there at the top on the outside it was and it was so hot in here I had to open the doors okay I had to open that big ass door and that little bitty door that's why I'm saying be careful do your own investigations trial and errors but first thing you need to think of is heat and what you're putting in it now that's basically it this thing I'm standing next to it but it's still warming it takes a little bit once that that stainless gets hot and that oil is dissipating as soon as it gets in there it's a flame boys girls dogs cats everybody it's a flame I'm just sitting here and here and you can hear it popping through there it's echoing through the copper up to here nothing's happening but you know I keep this away from everything that way in case something happens you don't know what if that gas would have exploded in there and it come back through this and shot a flame right up your right up the old butt kazoo what if it did you know that's that's I, I just that's perfect right up the old keister anyway bucket thingamabob little spacer this is just a half inch pipe I think and then your little leaky ass shut off valve copper line to this who's a what's to your sight glass down into the badass contraption that I come up with in there and I'll if I don't put it on the screen I'll make sure I want to mention the guy that come up with the puppy bull idea because this this kicks ass you just get them in there and make you a spacer and then you know the top hat was my idea you know hot rod guy Irish outlaw garage why not make it you know it's a hot rod fire motor engine thing but yeah so that's it so that's my waste oil burner you can use anything in there transmission fluid waste oil good oil barn chain oil gear lube you know cooking oil peanut oil don't matter it'll all burn just be careful what you put in there be careful with what you do with this don't leave it unattended at all do not leave it unattended because imagine if I wasn't around and, and I wasn't here to shut this thing down when that gas got in there huh yeah that could have been bad could have burned down my whole 50 bucks but you, I'm joking but you know what I mean so just be careful so that's gonna do it that's my waste oil burner there's more out there do investigations and trial and error just be careful okay guys appreciate you watching like share subscribe all that crap got so much coming on this channel so much cool shit coming on this channel probably cooler than anything you'll see out there how about an eight-year-old building a 350 Chevy? And he's dying to do it. We'll see you next time, guys. Ooh-wee! That's hot. That's why you don't open it. Look at that. Shut. Shut her down. There we go. Shut the door. 
hot. Damn hot. Make my shorts so hot I can cook an egg on it.